Wolf, you've seen the carrot of diplomacy being used to encourage regimes like Syria and Iran to join the world community. Here in Jordan, we are getting a look at the military stick that might be used by a coalition if it comes to that. Elite Jordanian troops train to assault a compound. U.S. Special Operations Forces practice a night raid. They can take down an enemy target in two minutes. 19 countries have sent 12,000 troops here to Jordan. Commanders say it's all about training. But there are worries unrest in neighboring Syria or tensions over Iran's nuclear program could spark a conflict. Troops here believe the next time they go to war, they will go together. The number one takeaway from this exercise is we are creating partnerships and friendships. Troops train for what they may face on a moment's notice. Uh, aiding uh, refugees in, in a refugee camp, uh, uh, attacking terrorists or safe houses, releasing hostages. Meet U.S. Army Captain Rory. We can't tell you his full name. We can't show you his face because Rory still runs a 12-man commando team. But here he says... The training has been uh, eye-opening. If war was to come here, Navy SEAL Captain Todd Tinsley might be a key player. He already runs a military task force watching the Persian Gulf for trouble from Iran. He says working together isn't just talk. If we got called up to do a uh, contingency, I, I think you would see something similar to what we're doing ex uh, right now. This military exercise is being watched throughout the Middle East, just in case military training becomes a military reality. Wolf? Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, May 23rd, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website's ggnonline.com, and on YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and ddarko2013. All the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description. And I'm sorry for the audio difference. My voice may be kind of low. That video was kind of whacked out, man, the audio, so it's going to be kind of out of balance. Either way, <clears throat> you heard that woman say in the beginning, oh, they're going to use the carrot. I think she said a diplomacy or some crap. And uh, otherwise, they're going to use the stick to beat them over the head, right? But what was, what was she saying? She was trying to uh, say to join, you want to join the international community. Well, that's the global government. And that right there is showing you that they're going for a regime change that is cozy towards this global government. I also um, thought it was interesting uh, that they sh <laughs> what that uh, commander was saying as one of his uh, soldiers or whoever they are, are uh, you know, that was pretty good marksmanship, man. He was nailing those targets one after another. And, uh, and then you listen to what he says. He goes, We're going to be there to build partnerships and friendships. And then uh, he kind of, listen to what he says again here. Uh, aiding uh, refugees in, in a refugee camp, uh, uh, attacking terrorists or safe houses, releasing hostages. We're going to be aiding refugees, uh, killing, attacking terrorists and raiding houses. And uh, we're going to help with and release hostages. So in other words, uh, those hostages are going to be anyone that's uh, pro, you know, current government, the pro Syrian government right now, and uh, they're going to get abducted in the middle of the in the middle of the night. Those are the uh, those are the raids, and of course the ones that resist them will be the ones that get killed to kill the terrorists, and the refugees will be the ones uh, that flood out of the country due to the fact that they're going to be increasing the violence. So it'll all be according to plan, of course, right? And here's just another uh, source to include in this report. Uh, basically, Jordan allowing the U.S. to train Syrian rebels on Jordanian soil. And uh, I first reported on this exercise, or a joint exercise going on, about a month ago. 
uh, but now it's coming out in public, uh, you know, just right there in um, CNN, that uh, that they're actually training for Syria. So, according to the sources, the drill involving 12 countries and led by the United States is focusing on instructing terrorist groups uh, fighting against the Syrian government on ways to attack strategic targets in Syria, including the country's missile arsenal, which is cause for concern for Israel. So it says here, UN uh, monitors dispute Syrian rebel claims of police killings. Rebels kidnap Lebanese pilgrims in northern Syria. So it says here that the um, Free Syrian Army denied any role in the kidnapping of these Shiite Lebanese pilgrims uh, while speculating that the regime probably did it. So it goes on, it says that the, uh, the claim that uh, the Syrian police shot and killed these demonstrators was uh, immediately disputed by the UN monitors. And it goes on, it says, a different UN convoy did come under attack in Homs, according to a report from the Syrian TV station. And it goes on, and says that this would be the fifth attack against the United Nations monitors since last month, including one in which the Free Syrian Army captured several monitors, claiming it was for their own protection. So this is who the... Uh, that, that exercise of special forces with Jordan and stuff like that. They're going to go in there and help the free Syrian army, which are, uh, like we said before, uh, terrorist groups. And I just covered recently that uh, both the United Nations and NATO both have um, basically come out and said that Al-Qaeda, or quote Al-Qaeda, right, uh, the terrorist organization, is uh, taking over the insurgency of Syria. So... U.S. Senate mulls unprecedented aid to Israel. Legislators aim to further expand security aid so as to improve Israelis, uh, basically their Iron Dome system capabilities. Goes on, it says the Senate aides at the bill that's known as, I remember uh, covering this last week, the Israeli U.S. Israeli Enhanced Security Cooperation Act of 2012, uh, which will propose shared satellite intelligence, aerial refueling, tanker special specialized munitions and surplus drawdown gear from Iraq is supposed to uh, pass by a lopsided margin. So, Next up we have Israel's uh, strategic analysts attack Iran, propose Midi's uh, peace deal. So he has produced a new study for the uh, Beijing Sadat Center, sorry if I mispronounced that, which advocates a military attack in Iran accompanied by an Israeli proposal for a comprehensive peace deal. It says essentially this paper is a blueprint for Bibi Natianu in his march towards war, outlines major issues and facing our faces in persuading the Israeli public and world opinion that his decision is just and it warns him of the pitfalls of naysayers will suggest and offers him arguments against the uh, nabobs, nabobs of negativism. So I guess this individual professor, uh, Dror, is, is quoted as saying, I'm an elitist. 80% of the critical decisions affecting Israel are shaped by maybe 100 or 200 people. Uh, 300, these are my clients. The United States envoy to Israel, U.S. ready to strike Iran. We've seen this before from May 17th, but the U.S. has plans in place to attack Iran if necessary to prevent it from developing nuclear weapons, Washington's envoy to Israel said. So, and this, of course, is ahead of these uh, nuclear talks. So, we're seeing the same rhetoric of Iran. And it says here, deal or no deal, Iran may be bombed, Israeli minister says. So, he was quoted as saying, a nuclear Iran is intolerable and no option should be taken off the table, refer referring to the use of force. Then our friends, the neocons, neoconservatives in Washington uh, Post, says here, military strike on Iran would calm nerves in the region. So it would actually calm nerves if they went ahead and struck Iran and caused an all-out regional war in the area. So this is from a piece by Matthew Crowing and uh, Jamie Fly urging us to pursue the military option with Iran. So this individual, besides being part of this foreign policy for neocons, says he's at the Council on Foreign Relations and work at the Obama Defense Department. So you can go in there and check it out. It's just typical neocon talk, you know, oh, a preventative war. You know, it's, uh, what does he go on here? It says, a you know, preventative war against Iran uh, before they get to the capability and game is over of pro uh, producing weapons-grade uranium. But uh, the biggest thing is what? It'll help uh, if they go ahead and attack, strategic uh, attack, uh, um, strikes on Iran's nuclear facilities. It could forestall Israel from taking matters into its own hands. So we, I guess I guess basically the United States is going to do everything for Israel. They're going to actually fight their wars for them. They're going to fund them, uh, back them up, and they don't have to do anything for the Israeli expansion that's uh, supposedly planned. And so people like this, the, uh, these think tanks that actually make up the policy, 
are willing to have these deaths on uh, their conscience. Well, it's going to be on Americans' conscience, too, because they're going to be helping to fund this. Britain's mulling a role in any Iran-Israeli conflict. So it goes on here, says British leaders are discussing how the country would respond to any military confrontation between Israel and Iran, including a possible involvement of its navy, the BBC reported. They're discussing not just the possibility of military confrontation, but what role, if any. And it goes on and says here that... Uh, Senior ministers in the council were told that if the talks with Iran fail and Israel attacks its nuclear facilities, this might trigger a wider range or wider war, sorry, in the Middle East. Then we have this article from uh, 520. It says here, Israel, U.S. to allow expe expedited entry for travelers. So people like Rahm Emanuel, uh, who's the CEO of the mega region is known as the Great Lakes of Chicago, will be able to travel between his home. Uh, one of his uh, other countries, Israel, uh, without hassle of checks. So that's great. Then Israeli army establishes neighborhood first response teams. And it goes on here and says that the Home Front Command is forming a first response team comprised of civilians who would be called to the rescue of neighbors in the events of a missile strike or natural disaster. And as Austria's defense minister slams Israel's unbearable Lieberman, uh, we have this article, a majority of Germans oppose Israel's uh, Middle East policies. The poll said 59% of those questioned said that they viewed the Jewish entity as aggressive, which indicates a 10% increase compared to a similar survey in 2009. We have Iran recalling its ambassador from Azerbaijan, and um, they're very strongly uh, associated with Israel as well. So it says here, West mulling military action against Iran. So this is from the 21st. Some countries, Western countries, are still considering a military operation against Iran as an option over its nuclear program, Russian minister said on Sunday. He said Russia is concerned that the possibility to try to solve the Iranian nuclear problem by military means is still viewed as real. So you probably remember me reporting on this, which was NATO Summit 2012 Ballistic Missile Shield to be put in place. And it goes on and says that this inter interim ballistic missile will protect NATO countries, you're either with us or against us, amid growing threats to security, especially from those boasting of nuclear capability, which they're all just making up and fabricating and stuff like that. Russia successfully fires new ballistic missiles. So this is how the answer said that they successfully launched a new intercontinental ballistic missile from uh, the Space Center. And someone mentioned about um, these are probably old school weapons, and, and I agree they are. And this is probably all just for show. I mean, when they start busting out with, you know, uh, lasers and death ray type stuff, that's when it's going to get interesting. Uh, but those are probably going to be used for the, quote, terrorists, which are the people in these countries like the U.S. and places in Europe and stuff like that that are um, basically, they're not trying to take on the, the governments. But it's just that the governments are totally immersed in this global government, this international community, and they don't want to be part of it anymore. So that's who those lasers are probably for. So it's here, Russia puts new radar on combat duty, a new generation of radar. It says here the radar is a ballistic missile early warning system has been launched. And for public consumption, NATO pullout won't actually remove troops from Afghanistan. And it goes on, it says that um, the Lisbon summit uh, seek to declare war over by the end of 2014, but keep large unspecified numbers of NATO troops occupying the nation and the nation uh, long beyond that end. So you probably remember this as well, uh, that pact that was signed by Obama and Karzai. Uh, the deal to keep U.S. ground troops in the nation through 2024. This will not be a combat mission. So, yeah, this is how they did in Iraq, a shift from a combat mission to a new training, advising, and assistance mission. So the Pakistani doctor who led a phony vaccination campaign aimed at helping the CIA pinpoint bin Laden's whereabouts has been sentenced to 33 years. Maybe he's like the SEAL team. Maybe he'll get uh, killed off, right? Kill all the witnesses in that. U.S. terror drone because it probably never even occurred. U.S. terror drone kills five in northwest Pakistan. So, so yeah, this must be the diligent progress that Obama was talking about at the NATO summit. Another reason to occupy uh, Yemen. Yemen on brink of food crisis as aid groups again. And it's probably a Western-backed intelligence operation. That big uh, suicide bomber in Yemen that killed a lot of people. Yemen, U.S. vowed to crush al-Qaeda after troops massacre. So the International Emergency Economic Powers Act gives Obama the ability to write an executive order blocking property of persons to threatening the peace, security, and stability of Yemen. And as the three suspected terrorists from the NATO summit say that the evidence against them was planted in their apartment, a plane was diverted because of a surgically implanted device. 
which is ironic, convenient, because officials just warned about these body bombs, pregnant people. So pregnant women can get harassed by the TSA and get raped by them as well and get radiated with the body scanners. Thank you.